breaking barriers and bridging the gaps between patients and doctors. Welcome to Brainstorming with the Docs and your co-hosts, Dr. Glenn Harrison and Dr. Colby Condos. All right, everyone. Welcome back to this week's episode of Brainstorming with the Docs. I'm Dr. Colby Condos. My co-host, as always, Dr. Glenn Harrison. How's it going, buddy? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's um, it's kind of weird. In Colorado, we never get mosquitoes from somebody that's not from Colorado. And they're everywhere. They're oh, absolutely man. everywhere. Well, they're where terrible you are, here. You probably sent them. There's probably so many where you are, they came this way because it was yeah. overpopulated. There. My kids look like they have chicken pox because there are so many mosquito bites on them right now. And you pair that with like the ticks this year. The mm-hmm. ticks are just absolutely atrocious. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, so are people starting to starting to fidget all the time? It's like they oh, have some, oh yeah, some neurological issues. Oh man, <laughs> I mean, it's always scratching. Like oh, is that a tick or something? Well, it could be a tick, and then it could be a, like a motor tick a too. Real tick. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um. So today, kind of like a off the cuff episode, um, mm-hmm. because we were actually going through a case right before this, and it kind of struck a chord with us. So we were just That's going right. to go straight from the cuff on this one. No notes, no outline, no previous (laughs) discussion, just straight getting at it. Raw, 100% raw. If this is your first time watching or listening and you like the content, please hit like and subscribe. Turn on don't like, just hit erase. Yeah, if you don't like it, just do it anyways. (laughs) Just like it anyways. Um, So today we're actually talking about some things that you might want to consider if you feel like your brain is not firing on all cylinders. If you're having some sort of cognitive issue, if you're having an issue with your memory, if you're having an issue with, you know, remembering what you read or where you're going, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, We're going to talk about some things that you might want to consider on this. And more specifically, some things that I see uh, more prevalent in my practice. Yeah. Um, I deal a little bit more with the neuro- neurological side of things. That's so, right. So, so I'm going to kind of hit you with a bunch of questions and we're just going to kind of, you know, mock an interview here of some of the, what, 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 what we were just talking about literally minutes ago. So, um, so you see, you see a lot of neurological problems in your office, right? That's, that's, that's kind of the thing that's, that, that you're getting known for in your area yep. and this is a relatively small neighborhood, a small, small town. Yep. And See a lot are, of stuff like dizziness, you know, yeah, balance issues, and, and, vertigo, mm-hmm. uh, concussions. Mm-hmm. Um, you're seeing, you're catching all sorts of bizarre things like Parkinson's or different Parkinsonian disorders and really, really advanced neurological disorders that are caught with very subtle findings, right? Yes. You say that versus yep. conventional medicine where they're like, yep. let's do an image and we find this big mass in your brain or wherever it is and say, oh, okay, then this means this and this, right? <laughs> or you can't move your arm and oh, well, let's, let's find the problem for that. You'll catch things very, very early. Right? Yes. From neurology. So you can. You, yeah. Yeah. So your exams are, are, are a lot more detailed, uh, a lot more timely. Like they're, 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 they're not time friendly. So, no, so this is kind of, the world. I'm, I'm just, I'm just painting the picture for the people listening of what it looks like. Yeah. My exams it, start at an hour, you know? Yeah. Because, because even when I do an exam and I don't do exams, neurological exams on, on the level that you do, but I'll have people that have gone to five, six different neurologists and, and I'll ask them, I say, well, what did you do? You've never done anything like this. And it, it blows my mind that uh, conventional neurology wouldn't do these things, but I think they rely more on imaging. Right. And more into Yeah, I, w- I would say yes. They look more for like ablative pathology. So that would be like tumors or strokes or space occupying lesions or or something like that. Um yeah. where it's like the exams that we're looking at. Um, we're looking at like, yeah, is that normal? Is it really normal? Is it less than normal? Is it less than optimal? Um, what does that mean? Um, where does that come from? Where does it integrate? So then you can start to see things like early, you know, like yeah, I've got and, and, Parkinson's and it, really, really early. And or, if you can catch it, if you can catch it early, it's not just bad news. It's, it's bad news with hopes to slow it down or, yeah. or, or, or maybe, maybe in some cases even shut it down. I don't, yeah. And maybe, maybe you wouldn't want to say that. Yeah, oh, yeah. There's a lot you can do. I mean, there's a lot, I don't want to say that it's like, there's a lot you can do that is beneficial and therapeutic. Um, you know, and, and there are cases that I have where it's extended their, or it's improved their prognosis, we'll say. Yeah. Um, or quality they, of life. Quality yeah. Of life. And, and, and it gives them, 
it gives them the opportunity to um, be invested in their care. Uh, so that it gives them the opportunity, like how involved do you want to get? Do you want a medication? Cause we can send you to, you know, we can send you out and go that route, or we can go food and nutraceuticals and all and exercises, neurological um, rehab, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, <clears throat> there's a lot of options. So, so I'm just painting the picture right now for people that don't understand functional neurology, what it is and few people do and, and, and what that looks like from, from your chair. So now um, this episode is about subtle things that uh, maybe people are, are, are noticing brain dysfunction, if you will, brain symptoms, or maybe just habits people have like the avoidance of reading, which actually stimulated this conversation, triggered this conversation. So what are, I don't know, I guess I'm just going to hit you with a, a, a blanket. Yeah, question. let's just, let's just what, say what, like, are, what are the top, what are the, I might need to write this down. What are the top 10 things behavioral or behavioral symptoms, if we want to call it that behavioral habits that indicate uh, a problem or what, what someone would this? say what like the tops, the top 10 signs and symptoms and maybe what they could possibly mean. Right. Yeah. What, these, these, what bizarre, I would look for. these, yeah, these bizarre yeah. little things that people yeah. go through their life and dismiss and dismiss and dismiss, but it could mean something else. I mean, I could, I could give you five or 10 from today. Right. So love it. Love it. My Keep first one, run with it. Uh, one of my first patients this morning there, they have a complaint of dizziness and like disconnect. Right. And it's, they're not, they don't have vertigo. So they don't feel like so they're dizzy, spinning, dizziness but they just feel like disconnect. This, what, what, yes. what do you mean? What do you mean by disconnect? So with them, they almost have like an, an experience where they aren't, they don't feel really well grounded in their body. Right. So when they turn, they feel like they're turning too much or, you know, they stand up and they feel like they keep standing up. They just feel like a general disconnect in their body. Right. Okay. So when we did their examination, um, we did a really in-depth neurological examination. We did a, uh, oculography. We did some video oc oculography and we looked at that. And basically what I found with them is like their eyes are doing a whole bunch of stuff. They're not supposed to, right. There's a uh -huh. lot of spontaneous movements. Um, her coordination is not what it should be. She has absolutely zero idea where her body's at in space, even in relationship to herself. So an example of this is when, you know, we do the finger nose test, their hands are straight out in front of them. Okay. Touch the very, very tip of your nose with the very, very tip of this finger as slowly and as accurately as you can. And if you miss your nose and you hit somewhere else on your face, you have a pretty poor representation of where your body's at in space. Mm. Okay. So you look at all these findings, you try to line all these findings up, and then it gives you a, like a broader picture about, okay. This is what this patient's suffering from. They have no idea where they're at. Yeah. So, so this symptom, the symptom of dizziness and disconnect, what was, what did she notice from her viewpoint throughout the day? What was her pain point? What did she notice in her day? What, what were these, these types of, well, so complaints? one of their biggest complaints was fatigue, right? So <laughs> she's like, first thing in the morning, I feel pretty good, but then by noon I'm exhausted. And she's, okay. and then by three o'clock, I feel like someone else is operating my body. Like okay. I knock stuff over and then, you know, you can tease out information too, you know, or do you feel comfortable driving? Do you get lost when you're driving? Yeah. There, I forget where I'm going a lot. Do you read for enjoyment? No, I don't read okay. anything. Cause I don't remember what I re read. I have to read emails six times before I realize it. Well, I'll have to go through a piece by piece in several set, like several different sittings to finally digest an entire email. Um, so that's one of them, right? So with them, you're looking at what can you do to improve their spatial awareness? <clears throat> both where they're at in relationship to themselves and where they're at in relationship to their environment. And you can do that a ton of different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, you can yeah. do that well, with this, vestibular this... rehab, you know, you can yeah, do it with this... visual rehab. There's a ton of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, we, we won't get into the technicalities of, of because of how you there's, no, because there's no protocol that we could give anybody no. for these things. No. So, so it's a functional neurology is all about promoting neuroplasticity and the right neuroplasticity. Uh, yeah. Positive restore. neuroplasticity right? yeah, to, to restore. So, so dizziness and disconnect. So that, that, that would be something, but you, you hit a lot of things here. You hit reduced neurological stamina. So better earlier when they're relatively rested and fading throughout the day. Yep. Uh, you talked about this individual talked about fatigue or exhaustion progressing throughout the day, but it's really their brain starts shutting down. Yeah. They don't have body. any more energy. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and then, and then, and you're then only prioritizing like basic stuff. So even things yeah. like your ability to like interact with your peers can be affected. You know, if you're tired yeah. and social interaction, 
Yeah, and and Joe Blow is like bugging you. Like, what are the chances that you can lose your temper and say things you didn't mm-hmm. want to? Okay. Better. So, you know, so there's not enough energy. You don't have the ability to to break that. To be neg- yeah, Shut to, it be off. Diplomatic, you know? to be diplomatic. To be diplomatic. So, so, it, so I'm, I'm trying to break down things that people, if they're dealing with throughout their life, maybe, maybe they should dig deeper. So any kind of dizziness, disconnect or, or brain fog, like drive some brain fog fatigue. Mm-hmm. If you have, I think one of the underappreciated things that people maybe should investigate that they don't is they will go like, I am tired. I feel like I am not remembering things as well as like once, you know, I was before, um, a lot of times people will come in and they're like, I think I have a thyroid thing. And you're like, yeah, you could, you know, and then you're on the thyroid and you're like, well, it looks good. Have you hit your head hard ever. Oh yeah. Lots <laughs> like, okay, let's, let's look into that. Let's dig into that a little bit. Um, you know, there's a bunch of stuff. I always like the saying, um, that the eyes are the window to the soul is really kind of an accurate statement, especially when you look at like the neurology of it, because, your eyes integrate so many different lobes and parts of the brain stem and it connects them all into the kind of this beautiful symphony. And when they're working perfect, everything looks like, you know, beautiful, everything's seamless. It sounds awesome. You know, it's kind of, I like to use the analogy. It's like all the instruments in the symphony playing at the same time in the right order and everything's awesome. Right. And until when those things start to break down, then you can, it can sound like noise. Right, because you got you know one instrument playing this time. If everything's not integrating together, all at the same time doing exactly what it should, that can have pretty profound impacts. You know, if your eyes are moving when they're not supposed to, it can make you feel like you're disconnected. Um, it can give you an altered sense of balance. You know, so if you're having brain fog, if you're forgetting what you're reading, you know, I read the same chapter in the book six times. Yeah, well, yeah. Explain that a little bit because we were just talking about a case like that where. <laughs> You know, whether it's an email or page in a book or whatever it is, or yeah, what, and it's what is a what is a common symptom or like you said, reading a page over and over and not able to, yeah, uh, retain it and digest it, it, right? Mm-hmm. So that's one of my big things, and and you can almost, if you were to do the exam before you got any of the any of the fine any of their complaints, right? Mm-hmm. You could probably do the exam and go, so do you have this issue? And they would go. Yeah, I do. How'd you know that? And you're like, cause this, you know, you see this a lot, you know, if you have this, you know, finding this really commonly in my experience correlates with this, you know? So if I see a lot of like spontaneous eye movements that aren't supposed to be there and they're doing them all the time, then the, there's a pretty the exam. good, yep. Yeah, the exam. Then there's a pretty good likelihood that I'm going to go, Hey, do you have trouble concentrating and like remembering what you read? Yeah. How'd you know that? Well, you know, if your eyes are moving all the time, it gets pretty hard to put together like the phonetics of a sentence if you can't identify a word and put them all in, in a string. So from their viewpoint, the only thing that they would notice is maybe it's hard to retain information or it's hard to read something and remember. Yeah. Or, or and, as, like, and as a result, as a result, they probably wouldn't do it for leisure. Oh, yeah. They're, like very few t- times have I ever had a patient that has these specific findings and they're like, yeah, I'd love to read. Never happens. Mm-hmm. It has never happened. Um, yeah. Okay. You know, so that, that's, an, that's another thing. Maybe that's, a, uh, that's another pain point that if someone's experiencing and, and it's been going on for a long time, I imagine, then, then it would be warranted. Um, or even like, you know, uh, diminished uh, endurance, like mental endurance. Okay. If things mm-hmm. are doing things, if, if you're your brain is trying to compensate over and over and over again all day long, right? Mm -hmm. And it's trying to adapt all day long. And it's not just a well-oiled machine and something else is picking up the slack. It requires a lot more energy, right? Yeah. So if you're looking at it and you go, you know, I had, I was in a car accident. Let's use this as as an example. I was in a car accident like four years ago. And, you know, I seemed to be doing pretty good at first, but then my balance kind of got bad. And then I had issues concentrating and then, my performance, I kind of underperformed at work and they told me I should take some time off. And then I went to X, Y, and Z providers and, you know, I do pretty good in the morning, but now I'm really, you know, struggling in the afternoons and I don't get the joy out of the things I used to. And I'm always tired in the afternoon. Like that, that could fit a pattern where you're like, okay, like there's got to be some sort of, you know, neurological finding there mm-hmm. where yeah. it might, your brain might've been compensating really, really well at first. Right. 
But then if you don't rehab injuries like that, they don't go away. They don't just heal themselves. You know, you just adapt and compensate really, really well. And that's fine until you keep, you know, I kind of like to use the analogy <clears throat> because I'm a parent, you, uh, you know, in the morning you can keep it together pretty good. You know, like you're making, you're making breakfast, you're, you know, clicking on all cylinders. And by the evening you're trying to clean the house. So you're ready for the week and your kids are whining nonstop and you're trying to make dinner and you're just on like you're, you're redlined and you, and your gas is on empty. Like that, that's how your brain is, right? It does pretty good first thing in the morning. And then you keep adding things onto it and it's trying to juggle all these things all at once. And it's still trying to adapt and compensate and it doesn't do a very good job then you're going to start to notice the issues. And then so, you notice the cracks. Yeah, I, I see it even in my office. When, when I'll actually ask patients when they come in, depending on the time of the day and you know what their history was before we go into the exam, I'll, I'll ask them, you know, where are you? Uh, are you are you feeling, you know, uh, average in energy, below or above? And and if they say, oh, really dragging myself today. I'm a lot more confident we're going to see other neurological findings versus right. if someone says, uh, you know, they're better. And if some, if I see somebody that that comes in and they have all these neurological brain fog, everything that we've talked about already, and they come in and they have all these complaints, I want them in the afternoon. I want them yeah. late afternoon. You want them in the worst. At their yeah, I want them worst. late afternoon and they, and they don't want to come in late afternoon. They want to no. come in in the morning or, or, or later morning when they're most right. metabolically firing, if you will. And then oh. every single time you want to see them, you want to see them at the exact same time, mm. right? Because then yeah. you can say that you're comparing apples to apples, right? That's if you right. see someone at like 9 a.m., they might look like a rock star compared to 3 p.m. That's true. That's true. So, um, so I have a, uh, so it, what other things uh, would you, would people see complaints, concerns, or neural, I, I shouldn't even say concerns, but just kind of things that they notice through, through the days, their days that maybe don't get any attention, but should neurological. Oh, I mean, there's, there's a brain. I, I could go on forever about these tremors. You know, there could be like, yeah, you know, I noticed like a little bit of a tremor sometimes, not all the time. Where, oh, I where, noticed, where would, it, if you can kind of elaborate could and anywhere. define that. Could be, it could be anywhere, but the most common I've seen is like recently would be the hands. Okay. You know, okay. Is there um, any action that they would be doing? It depends on the type of tremor because there's different mm -hmm. types of tremors too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it could be like a terminal tremor where you're trying to reach for a coffee cup. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it could be, yeah, there's different positions that you can put people in that'll bring out different types of tremors. Okay. So, but, but, but yeah, any kind of tremor should, there should, yeah, you should investigate attention. it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, balance. I have people that they'll, they'll notice usually people are like pretty astute and they'll realize when something isn't, isn't right. You know, um, Hey, yeah, I'm running well, this well, stuff. Will they, you know? will they, will they complain and say my balance has been getting worse yeah. in the last yep. three months? And they'll, months. they'll tell you, if you listen to them, they'll be like, yeah, I'm falling into stuff. I'm, and I'm always falling to my right. Uh, I'm knocking stuff over with my right hand, you know, whatever it is. Um, mm -hmm. you know, there's some people will come in and be like, I don't feel comfortable driving, you know? Um, okay. I'm having issues with like my short-term memory, you know, there's, mm -hmm. it could be, I have so much stuff. Okay. Um, well, I think we're going to keep going on and on and on here. So I'm just going to kind of summarize here. Uh, yep. Anybody listening? Because we've been bouncing around. So things that we should, uh, anybody experiencing these things, they should have further investigation because it could mean something else and it should be corrected because it could only get worse. Right. These are subtle. Yeah. And so, so say you've been to like a, a medical neurologist mm -hmm. and they're like, yeah, we don't see anything on the MRIs. You know, there's no, we can't find anything. That's great. And you still feel like there's more, get on the acnb.org website and go to the doctor locator and find someone that is board certified, has taken the exam and check, have them check you out. Mm -hmm. Because even though there's, there's no sort of ab ablative um, or pathological lesion, <clears throat> that doesn't mean that there's not something that can be done for you. Yeah. Okay. And now here are some of the things that we went through, just some of them. They, they, they can reach out to you for a bigger list. Oh, um, man. <laughs> dizziness and disconnect. Yeah. And, and briefly uh, elaborate what that would be again. So it's not vertigo, but it, just a general feeling of like you're, you don't feel well grounded. You feel like you're not connected to your body very well. You feel like you're not able to localize where you're at in relationship to yourself or to your environment. 
Okay. Okay. So if you uh, just feel like you're walking through and you're like, man, I don't really know where I'm at, but I don't feel dizzy. Disconnect. Like I feel weird. Yeah. yeah like the, the disconnect, I think. Yeah. Explains it. Another one, brain fog. That could mean lots of different things. Short term memory. That could mean going somewhere that, uh, inability to remember names, places that you should, uh, all sorts of different processes yep. if we want to call brain fog I, yep. I see this more than i ever thought and i in 10 years or eight year 10 years i see way more now than i did before and i'm not even more attentive to it it's just everywhere it's terrible it's scary actually yep. it's literally scary um uh it shouldn't be accepted regardless of, of what age another one diminished endurance neurological endurance can you briefly give us an example again of that what that looks yeah like? so if you're <clears throat> if you notice and, and again, these are all multifactorial issues, right? Uh -huh. So it's not yeah. just, unless you have like a, an onset, I, this uh -huh. happened and then everything started after that. If it was slow, then you need to consider other things like metabolic factors and stuff like that. Uh -huh. But we'll just say if you have diminished or declining, you know, neurological endurance, it could be anything. It could be like my balance is pretty good in the morning by the afternoon. It's terrible. Um, my thought process is pretty sharp. I'm pretty, pretty sharp and on point in the morning. And by the afternoon, I'm, you know, I'm missing words or I'm, you know, calling Greg Tyler or whatever. Um, it could be anything, you know, yeah. that way. But if you notice it, like if you notice it ebbs and flows, well, then you're going to want to get it, you know, okay, checked. So and it can be like, again, it could be multifactorial. So yeah. find someone that'll check multiple things. Okay. So that's diminished endurance. Another one is um, uh, reduced ability to retain information that's read. Yeah. So that one's, that one's pretty pinpoint. Uh, yeah. yeah. So if you're reading stuff multiple times, I mean, that could be considered brain fog too, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, especially with that one, probably want like some oculography. Okay. Yeah. Um, sure. which is like a test where they put goggles on your eyes and then uh -huh. graph it all out. And and, and also we talked about, it could be somebody reading an email, but not picking up details and maybe yeah. responding and the responses don't make any sense yeah. to, to the, to well, the, and then there's confusion with emails back and forth. Right. And you're like, well, I, I outlined this pretty well, I thought. And then yeah. you look back and you're like, yeah, it's literally there. Bullet point number three. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but, but uh, the, the, the other person that was reading or interpreting yep. was just Missed hitting the it. high points because yep. they, couldn't, they couldn't grasp everything. Okay. Um, another one I thought was really interesting reduced social tolerance, if I, if I can kind of put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, brief example of that. Well, I mean, if you say you're, an introvert by nature in general, mm -hmm. right? And you're like, I have got X amount of energy to deal with whoever, you know? So, but after work, you're like, I got nothing left. Just leave me alone. I'm going to go home. That could be like, are you truly introverted or do you just not have enough cognitive endurance or like endurance? Do you not have enough energy to put up with all the other stuff? Uh, it could be literally something as like simple as you're at work and you just snap and yell at your coworker. Did you yell at your coworker because you were actually that mad? Or did your brain not have enough energy to literally shut down the caveman that's yelling, you know, that he's doing something and, wrong? And I see this. I, I had my clinic, people will say, you know, I don't have the patience. I don't have the tolerance yeah. I used to. And and then they feel guilty that they, because they snap or whatever. And then and, and there's a sense of give guilt and, and, but they have all these other health issues as well, right? It's not just the only thing going on. Well, look, um, if you want to watch a perfect example of this, have your three-year-old miss a nap and watch, <laughs> watch the belt down in suit. That's literally it. You know, yeah. <laughs> you want to watch it in real time. You want to know what it looks like? Like, no, well, he's tired. There's no energy left. You know how I know? Cause he just threw his, uh, whatever at the wall and now he's <laughs> kicking and screaming on the floor, you know? Okay. That's a great example. Um, and I think everybody could appreciate that. Uh, tremors, <laughs> tremors are obvious, uh, yep. grabbing a teacup or whatever it is. Yeah. You want to look at the different causes cause there's different, there's yeah, different types. Fine, yeah. And fine yep. motor control. So yep. I see this in some individuals where they're, I don't know, like in the mechanic world, they're trying to use a screwdriver and now yep. it's harder to guide it. Yeah. It never was a year ago or yep. could be ago. like a terminal tremor. It could be a, you know, it could be a, an action tremor. It can be like a Parkinsonian type mm -hmm. tremor. That's why you just have to have someone check it out. Right. Yeah. Cause there's different types. For sure. And then, and then the last one we kind of talked about was balance progressively getting worse. And, you know, yep. The same so that one, it's not normal. Right. And the mm -hmm. number one, the number one cause of mortality in people in the United States, I think yeah. over the age of 65 is false. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, I'm running into stuff and you're 40 and you're falling over, you probably want to investigate it right now. 
Yeah. Because if it's bad at 40, it's going to be way bad at 60. So to, to wrap up, because I don't even know how long we've been rambling here, but uh, to wrap up, why are, why, if you can, what is the consequence, if there are, of, of not addressing these things that seem like little molehills? Yeah. Right I mean, it, what, what are but, the negative, what are, if there is negative consequences, what are the most significant ones here? Yeah. Uh, well, it gets worse, right? Okay. So you think about it. If you address something early, right, and you get ahead of it, so it could be diabetes, like, it could be whatever anything, it is, right? Yeah. It's significantly, I always like to use the saying that a, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of care, mm -hmm. right? So if you can be early to the party and you can address it, maybe nothing happens. Right. If you ignore it and you keep doing the same thing, I always, I also like the saying, if nothing changes, nothing changes. Right. So if you keep doing what you're doing, like the, the likelihood that if it's been going on for any sort of extended period of time, that it just magically gets better, pretty low. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're, if your balance is terrible, your balance is probably not going to remarkably get better without right. any sort of intervention. Right. If you feel like you're floating off the face of the earth and you've been doing it for three months, the likelihood that all of a sudden you magically figure out what's causing you to float off the face of the earth, pretty low, right? right. If you have a tremor yeah. and it's coming out more frequently, the likelihood that all of a sudden you magically get better and your tremor goes away, probably pretty low, right? So right. stop I, ignoring it I, and investigate. Uh -huh. it. And I think we're very good. I think we're very good. I, I think sometimes we have unrealistic hope that we just have hope things are going to get better one day or hope will we are, we'll, we'll heal. And uh, hope is important. In fact, there'd be a podcast we're going to roll out uh, here in the future with um, that's I'm jumping ahead here on hope, <laughs> but, uh, but, but hope without any practicality or a yeah, plan, intention, right? Yeah. It is, is absolutely useless. Right. So, so I think some of these things are, are frightening. Right? So uh, anyway, <laughs> So anyway, there's our off the cuff. Oh, this was a lot. You can tell this one was off the cuff because it is like, I think we went for like 35 minutes on this. Oh, no way. Okay. Um, so if you guys like this, um, please feel free to reach out to us. Hit like and subscribe. Turn on notifications because we're going to continue to maybe, who knows, do more of these. And uh, if maybe. somebody is dealing with some of these things and looking for help, um, you can reach out to us if you can't find the, what was it? What was the website? Yeah. So the website is 8 acnb.org um there's okay. a section called doctor locator mm -hmm. um you can plug in your zip code and do a search by radius type of deal uh you can also email us at info at brainstorming with the docs.com you can get on our websites mine is northlakeschiropractic.com dr glenn's is drgharrison.com um mm -hmm. you can drop a comment down below uh we do our best to check that probably the best way to do it is hit us up through email yeah um, we're on That's our awesome. website and we'll do our best to get back to you um yeah so yeah, hopefully you guys got value out of this. If you have any questions, please let us know and stay tuned. Uh, All right. I look we'll forward to the next one. Out each week. All right. <laughs> Sounds good, bud. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.